Converting from the cash basis of accounting to the accrual basis can be pretty confusing, such as when questions provide the cash that you paid and received, and then they show an increase or decrease in your AR balance and in your AP balance. So the key is going to be to write out the journal entries under the cash basis method and then under the accrual basis method and then compare the two. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at a side-by-side -side example of the cash basis and accrual basis. And then we're going to go through two practice questions where we start out with the cash numbers and then we're given AR and AP balances and then we use those to find the accrual basis. So let's jump in. So to start out, let's look at a cash to accrual example and write out the entries under the cash method and under the accrual method. A company earns 120,000 of revenue, of which 80,000 is collected in cash. The company's beginning of year AP balance was 12,000 and its end of year AP balance was 8,000. It paid out 20,000 of cash for expenses. So first let's think about the cash entries. It says that we collected 80,000 in cash. So from the cash basis method, we simply debit cash for 80,000 and credit revenue for 80,000. And it says we paid out 20,000 of cash for expenses. So we credited cash of 20,000 and debited expenses of 20,000. Therefore, our cash base net income is simply the 80,000 revenue minus the 20,000 expenses, 60,000. Now let's think about the accrual method entries. So we received 80,000 of cash, but we actually earned 120,000 of revenue because we use the accrual method. So we record revenue when we earn it, not when we actually receive the cash. This means that we had a credit to revenue of 120,000 and a debit to cash of 80,000. So we must have had a debit to accounts receivable of 40,000. So we have this 120,000 revenue, whereas the cash basis only had 80,000 of revenue. And then for the expenses, it says that the AP balance went from 12,000 down to 8,000. So the way that you decrease your AP balance is by paying off the AP balance. So this means that they must have paid uh, 4,000 of their AP balance for expenses that were recorded in a prior period. So they're paying 20,000 in cash, but 4,000 of it was to decrease the AP balance and the other 16,000 was for expenses. Therefore, they have the 120,000 of revenue and then only 16,000 of expenses. So the accrual basis net income is 104,000. So the key with AR and AP is that whenever you have an increase in your AR balance, then that's going to increase your accrual income versus the cash method income. And then when you have an increase in AP balance, that's going to decrease your accrual method uh, in your accrual method revenue. That's because you're then recording a debit to expense and a credit to AP. So there's no cash occurring, so it wouldn't be anything recorded as an expense for the cash method. But under the accrual method, it would be decreasing your net income. So you always want to pay attention to whether the AP and AR balances are increasing or decreasing. Now let's take a look at this practice question, which asks us to find the net income under the accrual basis. We have cash received from customers of 1.5 million and cash paid to suppliers of 900,000. So if they were asking for the cash basis net income, it would simply be 1.5 million minus 900,000. So it'd be 600,000 but we're looking for income under the accrual basis. So we see that AR starts out at 250,000 and then goes down to 220,000. What does that mean? It means that we collected 30,000 of AR for a revenue item that we recorded in a prior period. So that means that we had a debit to cash of 30,000 and a credit to revenue of, sorry, credit to accounts receivable of 30,000. That means that from this cash received, there's 30,000 of it that isn't actually revenue under the accrual basis. So we need to subtract out 30,000 from the 1.5 million because it applies to revenue from a prior period. And then we look at accounts payable. So we started with 120,000 and then it increased by 30,000. 
That means that we had a debit to expenses for $30,000 and a credit to accounts payable for $30,000. So even though the cash paid was $900,000, we need to actually increase our um, cash paid, our expenses by this $30,000 increase. So we need to say that our expenses are actually $930,000. So the revenue was the $1.5 million minus this $30,000 adjustment for cash we received from a prior period revenue. So $1,470,000. And then our expenses were the $900,000 cash paid plus the $30,000 in expenses that increased our accounts payable, $930,000. So we take $1,470,000 minus $930,000. So then our accrual basis net income is $540,000. Now let's take a look at a similar practice question, but AR instead of decreasing increases and AP instead of increasing decreases. So we're still looking for the net income under the accrual basis. We have cash received of 900,000 and cash paid of 500,000. Then we see that AR starts out at 150,000 and ends at 200,000. This means that in the year, we had an entry for accrual method of a debit to AR of 50,000 and a credit to revenue of 50,000. So we need to take this 900,000 and add in this extra 50,000 for the increase of the AR. So we're going to have for income 900,000 plus 50,000, 950,000. Now let's look at the expenses. So we paid out 500,000 of cash. And AP goes from 100,000 down to 80,000. So the way that you decrease AP, it has a credit balance, so you need to debit it. So that means that we debited AP by 20,000 and we credited cash by 20,000. So in other words, 20,000 of this 500,000 isn't actually for expenses. It's for paying down accounts payable from expenses from a prior period when we initially recorded that accounts payable. So instead of saying we paid out $500,000, we are going to have to subtract out this from the cash payments to say that we only paid out $480,000. So then our accrual basis net income is the $950,000 minus $480,000, $470,000 of accrual basis net income. So I hope you understand cash to accrual adjustments just a little better after watching this video. If you're interested in learning more about the cash flow statement, be sure to check out my cash flow video where I go through full practice questions on the statement of cash flows.